Today on the program, we're making some kind of red IPA type thing. Now this is a recipe from Chip's friend, which I'm basing mine off of, but I'm doing my own hops. The hops I'm doing are going to be something from all of these ones that were given to me from somebody who went to... Um, the homebrew con so yeah a bunch of them they got numbers they got codes some of them I'm going to figure out what we want to do the other thing we're doing is using the Capri blend again so that I'm sorry it's not a blend it's a strain we got extra wort boiling out here because it's uh, too much wort I'm gonna add some sugar and then I am going to go out so yeah red beers aren't something I make a lot of I don't think anybody makes a lot of them but uh, Chip had been talking about I want to make a red IPA and I'm like well I need to think of some hoppy beer to make um, maybe I'll make a red beer so anyway here's the wort it was boiling it is boiling I'm going to just get it up to a little more of a burp boil and this is three quarters of an ounce of pato, and that is my bittering charge. So, we will get this going and get this beer made. Here's some raspberry liqueur in process. I made a video on this many years ago. You can go look up raspberry liqueur Don Osborne, you'll find that, or I can also do a link. You know, I realized I didn't go over the recipe. I just showed a picture of the recipe on that webpage. But what I'm doing is 12 pounds of pills. Now, the recipe does say pale, but I have a sack of uh, North Star pills, which is a little sweeter anyway than maybe some pills. So I'm going to go with that. One pound of Vienna, and a half pound care pills. And then you can see, like, these other smaller amounts, caramel 40, caramel 80, or crystal, whatever you can get. And then just a little bit three ounces of Carafa 2 and I did do two cups which is about a pound of sugar. Now here's this bag of hops and what I decided is this one here 74 is now also known as Vista and it's said to have some good citrus notes and we can go over all that when we taste it but I think what I'll do I already bittered it so I think at flame mode I'll do an ounce let it go like 15 minutes and then I have this blend Cry cryopop and this also sounds yummy what does it say here uh, aroma citrus stone fruit sweet aromatic tropical so um, this one I think I'll put in after it's gone for 15 minutes so hopefully I'll get some of those really nice aromas and a little bit of flavor and then what I might do but wait is during active fermentation it's all the rage to pitch more hops so I think I will do another ounce of the Vista during active fermentation so we'll see when that is and uh, you know I don't usually do that I have been leery uh, not for like sanitation reasons or anything but I just I'm just not sure if it would oxidize the beer faster but the idea is that it won't because it's actually fermenting so um, I might give that a try also update good people of earth the anvil people have come through i have a pressurized fermenter here are all these parts here's this cap um you put these all these gas uh, and disconnect locks on there and i also they sent this spunding valve which will allow me to dial in the amount of pressure i want the beer fermenting at so i am happy to see this however even though you can ferment lagers warmer than usual, I just feel like, um, you know, 70 plus is probably pushing it. Uh, I think the idea is to do it maybe in the 60s. So I'm going to do two more of these 
Capri beers at least, which is an ale and has a slightly higher temperature. Um, then I'll see what my house is like temperature-wise, see if I can start on this pressurized fermenter stuff or if I just need to wait a little bit longer. But yeah, that's what we're doing for the hops. That's the grain bill and the boil is going. I think we have some rain coming. Maybe not for an hour or so, but it's uh, that's what they're saying. So here is what is now also known as Vista. You can see this code. I've seen it called the uh, 74. The boil is over. So the idea now is this is 9 point something alpha acid, 9.8. The idea is that it will get some bitterness from uh, this charge. Now I'm hoping in 15 minutes it will be, um, it might not cool down as much as, well it wouldn't cool down as much as it would be in like the winter time, right? Um, but I'm hoping it's lower so I won't get as much bitterness from this because check this out, look in this black box, 23.4%. So that's pretty potent, but the idea is that it would, um, you know, be cooler so you won't get as much bitterness. And this thing is supposed to produce really nice aromas. So that's the goal, and that's what we'll see. So after 15 minutes, I just checked, and it's only down to 194, which means it's probably cooled down 15, 16, 17, 18 degrees. But I don't want to add those other hops yet so I'm gonna give it some more time here is a jar of washed yeast from this Capri this is what my starter was made from and I made this starter last night and I tell you what good people it was 15 20 30 minutes and this thing had like a big croissant on it immediately you can kind of see the residue so this thing just is full of all kinds of yeast. I mean, this thing is just gonna tear through this beer. So I think I'm gonna, I was gonna use my big mouth bubbler so I could dump the hops in easily, but I think I, but that doesn't allow me to use blow off tube. So I think I will use my carboy so I can use blow off tube just in case, cause it's gonna be a decent gravity and um, I don't wanna mess with the, uh, you know, getting stuff clogged up and whatnot, but hopefully it will ferment just nice. But uh, while I'm waiting for it to cool down more, I thought I'd show you that yeast stuff. Okay, now we're looking better. It's been a half hour of a hop stand for the Vista, and it is 179, so that will work. But one thing I thought, I thought these were like the dust ones. So I'm gonna have to look up what cryo means, if that's a, a different way of processing these, or Maybe cryo is some kind of method, but you can get it in powder or hop pellet form. Does it say hop pellets? Oh, it does say hop pellets on this, but uh, I don't. Whatever cryo is, I don't use it much. Uh, I have, I think, at one point had some dust, so that's what I thought these were. But this is down to 179, so in theory, it will get less bitterness now than if it was, you know, post boil. So I'm just gonna do a little swirly swirl. Just be easier with two hands, but. So I think I will give this 15 minutes and then we'll do the rest. Here is the color as of now. I don't know if I thought it would be a little bit lighter. Um, I used one less pound of base malt than the original recipe, and I thought that that could be a consideration of making it a little, might be a little darker, but, um, you know, it's brown, light brown, slash red. We'll see how it looks when it gets fermented. Now, the other part about this Capri strain is it has a little bit of a higher temperature range. My first beer, as I said, in the New Zealand Blonde video, which was an ale, that I made with this Capri, it never got above 70. And the actual range is something like 72 to 76. So I'm not crazy about letting it rip to get to 76 or higher. 
my room over here right now is like 70 it is about like 76 77 so I'm gonna do my ice jugs I'm gonna try to keep it um, you know within reason but what I did not do last time is let it get above 70 so maybe this time for SMGs, if I can, I will let it get uh, you know closer into that range and see if it performs just fine, like they say. But basically, I got the yeast pitched, I got to aerate it, get it all buttoned up, and let her rip. I thought I would check on this. It's about 21 hours after pitching. It's um, 70 degrees is what we are at and we are definitely rocking and rolling so um i had this ice jug and these thingies and so um yeah 70 is fine i'm all right with that i might put some more ice in there it's you can see what it is it's a 70 Four or so but yeah off to a good start so you can hear this puppy I wonder if I can you can kind of see a bubble there she's chugging away folks that's what I'm that's the point I'm trying to make it has been uh, what time is it it's like six o'clock the day after I brewed it's still about 68 degrees or so this is what this looks like so this is definitely a high croissant situation now I have not I don't think I've ever done what I'm about to do but adding hops to the fermenter during high croissant is something that people do one of the things that is said is that if there's any oxygen pickup from dry hopping, like when it's done fermenting, that if you do it now, it will not be a concern because all the oxygen will be consumed and there's just CO2 in here. Uh, the other thing is that the, adding them at this point when the yeast are active is supposed to accomplish something different. I hope I don't need my funnel. <laughs> Then, uh, ooh, I lost a pellet. One pellet down. Not quite a full ounce is going in. Um, a different effect than if you... Right, we're almost done. Do it post-fermentation. Alright, that is it. And yeah, people say they just add them onto the... The, the, ye uh, the croisin, which is what I just did. And eventually they get down in there and do their dirty, dirty business. So that's what we're doing. I'm keeping an eye on the temps. Man, this thing is motoring. Love it. Yeah, I mean, I needed to do it today because honestly, this thing, I mean, it ain't going to take long and it's going to really start slowing down. So I believe at this point, 20, no, about 30 hours after pitching the yeast, this thing is probably about at its max ripping point I won't be surprised if in the morning it's even down a little bit hopefully this beer will be yummy okay so first thing we're gonna do is look at this beautiful beautiful flower actually here you go stand underneath it for a scale let me give the kid a little piece of granola bar it's this much bigger than me there it is you can see the top flower at the top has got to be four five feet over them actually there's a littler one at the very very top but yeah so one fun thing is I come out here and there's a bunch of bees I don't know if they're here right now but they're you know they'll be buzzing around there there's one but yeah there's lots of flowers this one's interesting because last year the one where these seeds came from um they're smart uh it only had one big flower and this one has just like a dozen so anyway that's the gardening section and now <laughs> we're gonna talk about the beer so uh, let's see we'll have you step back there so that should work okay so here it is it's been in the keg I can get an exact 
detail. It's more brown than red, but you know what? Now that I'm holding it and looking at it right here, and we're outside, yeah. it's kind of red-ish. It's but definitely not quarter brown. If anything, I would say it's like arrogant bastard, kind of like Maybe. dark, deep red meets the beginning of light brown. But I think if you were objectively analyzing it to make it red, yep. and like I said, when it's inside, it's more brown, uh, you would uh, change. So it was six ounce of some Kara 40, six ounce of Kara 80, three ounce of Carafa 2. Any of those, I guess, you would dial back a little bit. It has been kegged for 26 days. It went from 1071 to 1010. And uh, I, I'm pretty happy with the aroma and the flavor. It has a pretty good hop character. I don't know if the putting the pop blend hop stand, the cryo pop blend at, I think it was down to 180, and I added that, um, contributed much. I have the descriptors of what that does. And then also the Vista, I put the Vista in during active fermentation, which I don't usually do. So a few things, different. A couple different things. Two tree. I mean, I do get like a mango, ripe orange flavor. Maybe I. I mean, I always say like lemon, lime. Maybe not lemon, more like lime. Um, it's got a roasty. Not even roasty. That's a bad word. Caramelly but kind of something multi. that's like in the background that kind of reminds you of like black IPAs, red IPAs that aren't just trying to be an IPA with a different color. The head of this is even kind of beigey, so you can see where that color... Mm -hmm. Well, there is a fair amount of... I mean, there was like a pound of Vienna or something too. I didn't list off all of the ingredients, but there is yeah. like enough stuff in there that's not just pills mall like a lot of my um, beers are. I like are. This. It has a firm bitterness. Uh -huh. It's got a lot of these fruity characters, but then there's with that slight bit of caramel or roast, it's almost like uh, seared fruits or kind of like grilled oh, fruits. Well, um, that's interesting because one of the descriptors of uh, the cryopop blend is pineapple, okay, peach, strawberry, guava, mango, orange. So all these ripe, juicy, sweet fruits from the pop blend. And that capri yeast is really supposed to kind of. Yeah. play with those and heighten those and then mm -hmm. you did the fermentation hopping which it's also supposed to be kind of good for so mm -hmm. I think it's a cool beer to try to put it through. I don't get like I feel like sometimes when I pour some and smell it I get some aromas I don't know if I'm getting like a lot of noticeable aroma right now it has a hop aroma but I'm having a hard time I get it and I'm even stuffed up because I've been doing like oh. dusty house chores all day you get it off the nose. It has a hop aroma. Um, that probably would come from the, I suppose, more than anything, the fermentation added uh, yeah, so. Vista. The Vista hop, which I did a hop stand, one ounce, and then one ounce in the primary fermentation. Stone fruit, citrus, tropical fruit, floral, tangerine, melon, pear, green tea. Uh, I wonder if that green tea is kind of what I'm getting. A lot to put in there. I'm getting something that's not fruity and it's not malty, but it's oh. almost kind of earthy, almost a little. Well, floral and herbal and like green being... tea are sort of real generic terms that could get be a, like a non fruit type thing. So, the question one of the questions about this beer was is this a recipe going to make a red beer? I would say the only thing I did different from the recipe I was given is I think I did one last pound of base malt because it was like for double red ale and I was just not trying to go for like a 1080 right. thing. So I, but I kept the same amount of darker grain. So the, per the percentages were the same, you just scaled it back. No, I didn't. Uh, the percentages would have been slightly different because I just did like one last pound of base malt and I might have added sugar I can't remember oh, so it would my be head. A little darker. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah you could either do what I did and dial back you know the six ounce I mean you could do 
half of those two. You could do three ounce. You could buy, dial back the three ounce of craft at two. Yeah, the three. I was just looking at a recipe that I did with only three oh, ounces really of like wild. chocolate rye, and I was just like, man, like it. Yeah, it goes a long it way. It does. That if that's yeah. not, if you're not going for a dark beer, if you just want red, uh -huh. you might even think of like Kara red. Maybe change up your base malts that are yeah. a little slightly more kiln. Because when we say red, and then we hold this up, like I'm still chasing it too. I've done three beers in the last year that I'm like, this is gonna be the time I finally get to like Nosferatu, glimmering, shining red. It's always just uh, like this kind of like dull layer of brown. I don't think I've. I think you gotta like. I ever made a good red beer really. Like I've tried a couple it's of there, times. It's there. It's out there. Tell us how to do it. Tried a couple of times. Yeah, that's true. If you Link can, them shizzes. If you can make one. But um, so I have all of these experimental hops that I was given yeah. from somebody else who went to a homebrew con. Um, and that's fun. It's fun when you don't know exactly what you're going to get. And I will say I don't know if it's exactly the combination of the malts and the hops or if it's mostly the hops but they are you know tasty and maybe a little bit different it is a juicy hop it's like like i was saying the ripe orange tangerine mango if you like that kind of stuff i don't know if it's the vista i think you can buy the vista i'm not really sure it's labeled as vista now it used to be like an experimental code number um but well, then, i will say this is not like your typical like kind of like west coast red ipa like racer red or red racer whatever how would that be different I feel like it would just be writing those like really piney, resiny kind of like sea hop notes and this Maybe. is definitely a red IPA or a red ale, whatever you want to call it, with a little fruit character, a little of this like kind of earthy, melony, mm -hmm. if the green tea, whatever, there's just something that's not making it this, uh, not as like, like edgy, piney, right? yeah, yeah, wicked, call, bitter. Which is nice, especially oh, on this time good, of year. It's a nice beer. I'm happy with it. It did. It is eight percent. I did do some calcs. I don't usually do that, but I was curious. And the 1071 to 1010 puts it at like right about eight. And and initially, it had a little bit of an alcohol melt. But now I think after a few weeks, that's not that noticeable. Your tolerance is higher now, is what it is. <laughs> Been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> what was Brad's original recipe then? This is. Eight was it nine? Or oh, nine? that's a good question. I'm not yeah. sure because then I don't know like because it was a double red. It was. was like a, I think it was 1080 ish. Okay. And mine was 1071. So not that. Yeah. Yours is 1.75 red ale instead of two double red ale. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we've got the lovely uh, greeneries. We got these guys. We can make some uh, some uh, uh, purses and uh, cloth and paper and whatnot out of this. But uh, anyway. Yeah, if you can make a red beer and you know how to do it, let me know. Yeah, and, let us know uh, the grist secret to like a shiny, I would say like an illuminated red ale that when you hold it up, you can see through it, it glows red, it doesn't get that kind of brown, chewy brown tan. Yeah. And this is not that clear either. Yeah. Well, I think that's the yeast. The, another beer I made, the New Zealand Blonde, that thing is finally clear. <laughs> However oh. long it's been, just the like the other day, I looked at it and was like, oh, this beer is clear now, and it's probably been six weeks or more. So, um, maybe I'm gonna need confirmation after time. the video stops rolling on that. Okay, all right. Anyway, that's long enough for this. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.